Hi everyone, welcome to the Tesla Economist. Please hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. In my recent Tesla Beats Deliveries Targets video, I calculated that Tesla are at a current rate of 60,000 cars a month, which when spread out annually equates to 720,000 cars produced a year. This is just Fremont and Model 3 Shanghai factories. So what we need to estimate is how much Tesla is able to ramp up their current factories and what additions will the new factories coming online this year make. So let's begin. Firstly, we should start with Fremont. From the 60,000 run rate we have, I currently estimate that Shanghai is at 24,000 a month, leaving 36,000 a month from Fremont. Now, Fremont includes the Model X, S, Y, and 3, so let's calculate each of those. We can start with the Model X and Y. Now, they seem to have consistent sales of around 10 to 20,000 a quarter, but before they were looking dated, they were up to close to 30,000 a quarter. Now, it seems fairly obvious that new shapes of S and X are about to be released. Believe, I believe consumers have felt this coming for a long time, and as a result, this has been affecting sales. With the new shapes, features, performance, and everything else to come, it will give Model S and X sales a massive boost. I think the most accurate estimate will be where they were previously around the 30,000. This could be argued as conservative, as Tesla are a lot more well-known now, and sales could be even more. But also, a lot of consumers purchased back then, as there were no other EV alternatives. In addition to this, there is also the Model S Plaid, which is essentially the quickest car in the world, and priced less than the Porsche, which could stimulate extra sales. So given this, I think we will just keep with a nice consistent 30,000 a quarter or 10,000 a month. However, Tesla have shut down the X and S production line until the 11th of January, so let's just say 4,000 for January, as there may also be some minor ramping up getting the production line restarted again. There have been people on the internet studying the VINs of registered Model Ys, and we can use these numbers to actually gather a reasonable estimate between how many Model Ys were registered in the US. The estimate is around 41,650 last quarter, or 13,900 a month. Now, that would have been the average, which was up from an average of just over 11,000 a month from the previous quarter. With that, we can estimate that the production for Model Y is increasing at a rate of 1,000 a month. I think this may be conservative, but there is only so much room in Fremont, and they have to produce Model 3 too. These numbers do feel low to me, but it would actually be a similar run rate to what the Model 3 was at the same stage. So perhaps we can assume the Model 3 at Fremont might also increase at the same rate at 1,000 a month. So if we subtract Model Ys produced and Model X and S from the total of, from, from Fremont, we're left with a run rate of 18,100 Model 3s from Fremont in December. And we will just increase production at a rate of 1,000 a week. Due to the virus, it has made it more difficult to get numbers here, so I think I am leaning on the conservative side, just to be safe. In Shanghai, Tesla are around a run rate of 24,000 in December 2020. I think they should hit 25,000 in January. However, Tesla said that the capacity of the plant is 300,000 cars a year, or 25,000 a month. That would mean that we are now at capacity, so I've kept it all at 25,000 a month. I think it highly likely they do improve their rate of production. Again, it could be similar to Fremont at 1,000 cars a month improvement, which would mean a 50% annual production improvement. It is possible that could happen. On the other hand, Fremont is a larger facility, rumoured to reach a capacity of 1 million. Now, what I've done here is taken the Chinese manufacturing numbers for the Model 3 in Shanghai and used them to increase the Model Y factory at the same equivalent rate. And yes, I know Shanghai was shut down for some of it. The, the capacity of Model Y in Shanghai is only 250,000 a year, or 20,833 a month. Now I have enough figures of Shanghai's production last year to give us a really good idea of how fast they were able to ramp up. Considering the capacity of the Model Y facility is 250,000 and the Model 3 is 300,000, then the Model Y has 83% as much capacity. Therefore, I've decided to use this number as a weighting factor on the Model 3 numbers. So here you can see it gives us our predicted numbers for each month for the Model Y. Tesla say that Berlin has a capacity of 500,000 and plan on starting production as early as July the 1st. And considering they started production earlier than forecast for Shanghai Model 3 and Model Y, I don't think they have any reason to doubt this date, except for the fact it's Germany and there can be a lot of bureaucracy to deal with. But just to err on the side of caution, we will count July 0 for production and start it in, in August. Then it would only be right to assume the same metric for predicting ramping up as we did for the Model Y. So this time the Berlin fact factory is bigger, 500,000 capacity compared to Shanghai's 300,000, which give us a weighting this time of 166%, but we're only going to use it for the last five months of the year. 
However, it's possible they could ramp up faster due to all the additional experience they now have and production improvement, improvements like the Gigapress. We don't get given too much information about Austin. We have seen the production schedule though, and supposedly by May the 1st, the building will enter the first substantial complete, completion stage. Substantial completion is the stage when a construction project is deemed sufficiently completed to the point where the owner can use it for its intended purpose. This definition of substantial completion is based on the language in the American Institute of Architects. But in other words, the first building will be complete for its intended use in May the 1st. We haven't been told what will start, what Tesla will start producing in the first building. I believe the definition of substantial completion does not include the factory equipment. So from there, all of that will still need to be installed. So this could take another few months again. So I'm estimating we won't see anything coming off the line until October. It looks like most people think it will be the Model Y factory first, which does make sense, as this is the most profitable, best-selling car, and they need to get the numbers up as fast as possible for the RoboTaxi network. They're also more familiar with the production line compared to the Cybertruck. I think we can use identical ramp-up rate to what we had in Berlin, as I think there will be a similar, similarly sized factories. The Cybertruck is a different machine. I'm not sure if it would take longer to ramp up than Model Y, or maybe less time, due to how simple its shape is, and no paint required. Either way, when I'm giving advice, I prefer assuming on the side of caution. So I'm actually going to go for 50% of the rate they were doing in Shanghai Model 3. It will also be a question of Tesla scaling up their new battery production to also meet this new supply. I think we might see the first of the tri-motors coming off, and off the line as early as November. From here, it's real guesswork. The Roadster and Semi were both meant to be released this year. On the other hand, those two models was, will be Tesla's fewest selling models, so they actually won't have a significant impact on the number of deliveries. I'm going to guess they came out at the start of Q4, and I've only guessed a total of 1,600 of them combined. I'm just going to guess they don't start delivering the Model 3 from Texas until December. I suspect that this factory will also supply Europe with a lot of their Model 3s. It may very well even be cheaper to ship them from Texas than it is China, at least to some countries. We will likely know a lot more about what's going on in Austin after the, after the earnings report in February. So I might update this when I have more information. And that completes all the models for each factory. We can also work out a Q4 figure, which will help identify what level they are at at the end of the year. As we can see, Fremont alone will be approaching 200,000 a quarter. This isn't too insane. It's believed Fremont has a capacity of 1 million cars a year. Shanghai would just about reach its alleged capacity at this stage of annual rate of 550,000 cars a year. But as we can start to see, next year is going to be all about how much Tesla scale at their new Berlin and Austin factories. But yes, that's right. We have a total figure of 1,269,920 estimate deliveries for 2021. This forecast really is an if everything goes well forecast. With things like viruses and unstable financial systems, there is always a chance of more shutdowns and possibly a recession ahead. Anything like that could affect these figures negatively, 20%. They're creating new untested technologies and learning lots on the way still, but we can't say for certain new battery production real, will be ready in time. But even if we remove 20% from this figure, it still comes to over a million deliveries. Optimistically speaking out of these figures, I would expect that it's highly possible Tesla exceed their Model 3 Shanghai capacity of 25,000 cars a month, probably as early as February or March and it may have reached 35,000 a month by the end of the year. I was extremely conservative on Cybertruck, but it's possible the battery production will be to a good level by that stage, and it's such a simple design with no paint. These cars may come off the production line faster than Model Y. I, give them a 50, I gave them a 50% weighting, but it could have really been a 200%. So if that is the case, then it's possible we could see production next year actually as high as close as one and a half million vehicles. One way or another, it's going to be another seriously killer year for Tesla. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe.